Welcome to our dynamic weather and sky system. We're in advanced weather transitions, control areas, advanced biomes like sandstorms, light, rain, thunderstorms, foggy mornings and advanced temperature regulation. Transitions and beautiful night skies, moons, suns, everything is included. Has advanced time management, drag and drop day night cycle management, and most importantly, multiplayer based biomes with transition management between all kinds of weather states. Like so. While one player is in a nice and easy environment, the other one is in the middle of a blizzard. All code is easy, accessible, and easy to management. And most importantly, all the code is in the game state. And we can adjust all the game state variables for our world via some managers that we can place in the world like the time manager, day night cycle manager, classes like that. This system has a lot. It has too much to discuss. It has puddles, it has snow effects, it has wind effects, rain, sandstorm, fog, global temperature management, biome temperature management, seamless transitions between weather types, fully network ready and highly optimized. Night skies, aurora effects, it's a lot. If you are interested in the system, let me show you a couple of things on how you can use it. Let me first discuss the main classes, how you can use it, and then how you can set up your biomes. The main classes that you want to use is you want to drag and drop the day-night cycle in the map. The day-night cycle itself will have variables like uh, skylight intensity, night sky intensity, colors, and just the basics. This class is responsible for all the visual effects, post-processing, etc. The other thing that you want is you want to have a time manager. And this time manager is also a class um, which defines, okay, what current time is it? What's the day? What's the month? The seasons? How many days per month? How many days per year? Or how many months in a year? It's highly adjustable. Now it's good to know that this time manager and the day-night cycle manager right here, these are using, well, or are used to inject information into the game state. And if you open up the game state in this project, then we'll see these two components that are assigned. And we use these game state components to make sure that the information is quickly and easily accessible the right way in a multiplayer game. However, in multiplayer games, you also want to have different biomes. For instance, you want players to be able to travel to a world where it's snowy and in other worlds to be rainy or foggy or just sunny in general. And you want the player to be in a biome of the snow, to have it cold, and the one in a more hotter climate to be warm. However, you don't always want to use a biome. So therefore, we have made a global biome. And the global biome is one that is uh, applicable for when you are not in a specific biome. And the global biome is also a drag and drop in the world. And we can simply set, okay, this is the biome name. These are the state, maybe these are the transitions, etc. However, if you want to travel uh, the player to another biome, it's possible. Just like this one, the grassland or this aquatic one. And here you can define all the transitions, the states, the probabilities. Um, yeah, just to make sure that the right weather types and weather transitions are applicable for that biome. Now, the other most important thing for this is temperature management. So what we do is we have a game state time manager and the time determines the base value for the temperature. So first of all, we have a base temperature per season. However, also for the part of day, because obviously in the night it's colder than during the day. However, if you want to adjust that, that's easily done by a couple of clicks. But now the second variable for the temperature, that's obviously a biome and that's the weather state. So therefore we made uh, uh, data assets, yeah. each weather type is a data asset which is easily adjustable or easy to add. So if you want to add a new weather type, you can, just with a couple of clicks. And let me show you how the data asset looks inside. So if you open up data asset snowy, we show an icon, we say, okay, this is the type of weather condition. Um, and we can also override things like, okay, what's the light intensity? Uh, do we have snow accumulation or rain or puddles? Um, what is the wind intensity, wind direction, things like that. 
And for the weather, what is the temperature offset? So if it's snowy, we say, okay, it has a maximum value of minus eight or otherwise minus five. So if it's, if it's winter and it is night and it is snowy, that it means it's, it will be very cold. This data asset also includes, okay, what kind of particle effects do we want to spawn? But now we have a third factor and that is the player because the player also has effect for the temperature. So if we open up the player controller class, this one will have a player controller weather manager. And this one is for the player itself. This one determines, okay, what kind of biome am I in right now? Uh, what is the temperature of this biome? However, am I maybe near a fire? Am I in a control area? And control areas are more things, oh, that's not raining inside. Um, uh, maybe I'm near a fire. And all the code here in play controller, it's nice, it's organized. Uh, we have a logical events like enter the biome, exit the biome, enter the control area, etc. Now let's dive into that control area a bit more. I've created an active component control area temperature. And what this one does, it can override a specific control area with a specific temperature range and also has a base temperature. We can automatically spawn colliders. Uh, for instance, for this uh, campfire, obviously I want to spawn a sphere like this, or if I want to increase the radius, I can, like so. And this is also applicable for like inside or even duplicates like a control area in a control area. Like so, nice. Now let's talk about some integrations. For instance, uh, I have provided this outer landscape that you can see right here. And I have this code optionally uh, to connect to a weather system. So if you have your own landscape system, you can just add this and boom, it will work. This one will try to create puddles, uh, snow accumulation effects, uh, uh, the rain, etc. And on your character materials, you could even add raindrops to your character itself, which is simply listening to a rain intensity value, make sure that there are raindrops over the body. When you get the system, you will get this complete project that you see right now here on my screen. And because of that, there are a couple of things included. It's currently not an add to project. Uh, I want to in the future, but for now, I just want to make sure that all the settings are set up for you right now. So if you want to use this in your project and you need to migrate it, but things like an upper left corner, the UI is common UI, so that's a plugin that you can enable. If you don't want the UI, then you can simply remove it. And if you don't want all the assets, the trees, the grass, uh, the character, uh, simply remove it or don't use it. The core thing that you will need is the biomes, the game state components, and most likely these material functions to adjust to the uh, landscape, the wind, things like that. I really hope you enjoy the system. I do. I, I loved making this. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Obviously, we will have tools available. More information is coming. Um, and as always, please let me know what you think. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.